what should I do? She goes, read my book. So I bought the book and read the book. And in that book, it talks about visual spelling. So because I've been in the world for so long at that point, I knew loads of words. And there's a thing about looking for the word in your head rather than listening for the word in your head. When you look up either left or right, your access, so it depends on which side you have, but you're accessing memory or accessing creation. I look up and it's so effective at the time there was a film called Assassin's Creed in the cinema. I'd been to see it. I said to my dad that it was it was a Friday, um, went for family dinner, and I said to my dad, I said, Oh, I'm reading this book about spelling. Uh yeah, yeah. And he, I've seen it. He goes, Oh, how do you spell assassins? No, I won't do it now because I'll get it wrong. But I got it perfectly right because I'd just seen the poster. I looked and I went, ooh, and the number of red lines in my Word documents over the course of 12 months went from, because dyslexics miss letters, A, the, that sort of shower, uh, went from loads to virtually nil. That is from a writing perspective. I was also trained at Yellow Pages about how to write project plans and how to proofread. So you proofread out loud. Because when you read it in your head, you fill in the gaps that you miss out. When you read it out loud, you go, oh, that doesn't work. That's the dyslexia from uh, any challenge uh, point of view. But the, all right, so I think it's worth reading as long as they load. Uh, okay, so this is from a book called The Gift of Dyslexia. And I'll, um, I'll, I'll tell you, this, so this is just in the first page or so. The mental function that causes dyslexia is a gift in the truest sense of the word, a natural ability, a talent. It is something special that enhances the individual. Dyslexics don't develop the same gifts, but they do have certain mental functions in common. Here are the basic abilities all dyslexics share. They can utilize the brain's ability to alter and create perception, the primary ability. They're highly aware of the environment. They're more curious than average. They think mainly in pictures instead of words. They're highly intuitive and insightful. They think and perceive multidimensionally using all the senses. They can experience thought as reality and they have vivid imaginations. Now, I read that much later after I'd written my own book. And in my own book, and this is how well, I, this is the thing about finding out. I'd written next, so I'm re I'm recovering from stroke. I'm volunteering in a primary school. I'm trying to teach primary children or give primary children the confidence that I had. So I developed this program based on uh, Tony Robbins' Unleash the Power Within. Blah blah blah. Doing all this, and I, so I wrote in my book. Yeah, about my my perception, and I went. It's like it's like I've got six six or nine spheres that I'm looking at all at the same time, and I have to when I tell people I have to stop and count them to see how many I'm using. So I can hold up to fifteen constantly, but I typically use nine to twelve on a daily basis, which means I've got three or so that I can use to, so I can meditate whilst driving at incredibly high speeds, listening to rumbling trance music, because eight perspectives are taking up doing that and really being aware, and six, seven are available. Um, but that's that's creating perception. So I don't actually see these perspectives but what i do is from where i'm sitting in the room i have if you're a mathematician all the angles and all the shapes that you need to understand things and so i'm looking at now with multiple perspectives they center in on me when i'm doing my when i'm just in they expand out to serve tasks when I'm doing tasks. 